I'm asked all the time if you can use different mediums for my online classes and the answer is absolutely yes. If you've bought an acrylic class but want to do it in a watercolour, simply remember that you may have to preserve some of the whites of the paper. You may need to mask those out in advance. If you've bought an acrylic class but want to do it in oils, you'll simply paint along with me in the video as you would do. However, you may need to allow it to dry in stages. So typically, where I use a hairdryer, you'd need to leave that to dry before proceeding with the rest of the video. However, if you've bought an oil painting class from me but really want to paint that in acrylics, the main problem you may face is the blending issue. Now I've already demonstrated how to mix a gel medium in a previous video, so I'm going to jump on over to that video now. So today's uh, little tip I wanted to share with you um, is how to extend the drying time of acrylics. One of the biggest complaints people have with acrylics is how quickly they dry. Now you can purchase um, the flow improver which does help the drying time and you can also um, purchase the slow drying medium gel. And I don't actually like the consistency of either one is a bit too thick and the other is too runny. So to get around that, I actually mix the two mediums together and I'll have a little bottle and I'll squirt a percentage of the, um, the gel into the bottle and it's around about a 60-40 split, um, more of the um, gel to the flow improver. So we'll uh, get some of that in there. Nice sound effects for you there as well. And we'll, uh, some of the um, fluid, and then you mix the two together. Now this will foam up a little bit on you, and if you just leave it sitting on a shelf for an hour or so, it'll settle down. Um, you've no worries about this sort of going off, it will last. So I will usually make quite a large container of this and then just squirt out a portion of what I need for that particular painting. Um, and this just sits on the shelf until I'm ready to use it again. So I've got some here and I'll show you how I use this. Now it's just got a nice creamy consistency, which is still a gel, but it's just a little bit more fluid. So I'll paint some on. So if I'm, I'm blending um, a sky or a rose or a portrait, I'll cover the area. Now if necessary, you can just lightly mist it as well. And that'll just give you a little bit more time. But that gives you a lot more time than just using the acrylics just on its own. So I'm going to just show you how to blend. I'm going to add some red into that, give that a wipe, and then we'll put some yellow at the side. And you can see now how you can create a really nice soft blend. This is absolutely ideal for doing skies. And you can finish off by using a small mop to get a really super soft blend and a nice seamless finish. So now you've seen how I've mixed the gel medium. In this next tutorial, I'm going to show you how I actually use that gel medium to give you some ideas how you can use that medium for blending. So we'll jump on over to that video now. Now I'm asked all the time for hints and tips on what you can do if you want to paint with acrylics. So starting with tip number one, tone the canvas. So to tone the canvas, you're simply going to choose a colour and paint the whole of the canvas in this one colour. Well, why do this? Well, it really does help your painting when you start from a mid-tone rather than from the white of the canvas. And it really does help you judge your tones much better. It will also get rid of any little white flecks um, that may be peeking through in your final painting. You can use any colour to tone your canvas. For example, if you wanted to have a cool colour, you could use a blue. But actually, the easiest thing is to choose a warm grey, which is what I'm doing here in the demonstration. Um, and I've made this using black and white and a very small amount of burnt umber. And this is going to give us a really neutral base to start working from. 
Grey is an easy colour to work with, but sometimes I'll use a very dark grey, for example when I'm doing a snow scene, and that way then I'm able to build up the lights um, with the white of the snow. So for tip number two, I'm going to be talking about using gesso, white gesso to be exact, as a painting medium. White gesso is a great medium to use when you're wanting to cover a large area such as in a sky. So I'll begin by actually using a hate brush and just putting a very thin coat of water over the area I want to, to work and then I'll go right into that white gesso and cover the whole of the, uh, the area. Now I like to use the very thick gesso and I do like to put this on quite heavy so that I've really got a nice coverage. The hate brush is absolutely an essential tool for acrylics um, for actually getting this lovely soft blended sky effect. Now if you put this on generously this will actually stay open for quite a long time so that you're able to continually keep blending your colours. You can also use a little mister and gently uh, spray the area with a bit of water and that will give you an even longer blending time. However, do remember to actually blend the mister bottle in because you'll end up with those little white spots in your painting otherwise. So here you can see how much I've actually applied on that. You really do need to be quite generous with this and that will give you that open blending time so that you're able to really get some lovely smooth skies. This is ideal for something like that, for getting a lovely soft um, sky, blending different tones into each other. So I'm putting a little bit of cadmium orange on the brush and I'm using a figure of eight stroke to sort of blend that into the white. And of course by mixing that with the white it's going to become very pastel, uh, very soft. This is ideal for maybe a sunset. Now I'm going into a little bit of ultramarine blue and I'm working at the top. And again using this flip-flop crisscross stroke and I'm going to work that into uh, the top part of the sky. And again hopefully you can see how creamy this actually is and how much blending time you really have. Now I'll wash the brush and get rid of all that excess paint and then what you want to do is actually squeeze that out um, and form a lovely uh, chiseled edge and then very very lightly hardly any pressure at all, in fact the bristles shouldn't bend at all, you want to use a very light feathered stroke. So now I've gone back into some orange, again you can see how open this is and how it's still wet, now I've been painting this for a good 5 or 10 minutes um, and it's still kept open and nice and wet, so if I want to change the tone add a little bit more of that orange, be a little bit stronger, I can still work into this very open paint. Here I'm picking up some purple and some blue, I'm working both of those two together, again just darkening that upper part of the sky. I've sped this up again, this is quite repetitive now, but hopefully you can kind of see how much open time we actually have. So this is a great technique for getting some really soft blended skies. Always remember to get the brush to that lovely chiseled edge whenever you want to do the feathered stroke, super light, back and forth, and you can get a really, really soft blend. Now of course I've chosen this sort of orange and blue and purple, but of course you can do this with any colour, but you can see how seamless we've got the, uh, the blending. And once you're happy with everything, you dry that off with the hairdryer. Tip number three is all about working in layers. Too often we're in a rush to get from the start of a painting to the finished painting, but my advice is to always work in layers, especially when you're working with acrylics. So all too often we're in a rush to try and do too much all at once um, and what I mean by working in layers is let each layer dry before moving on to the next thing. 
So of course I want my clouds to be nice and soft in this sky and I'm going to begin using some gel medium. Now I've actually demonstrated in another video how I mix all this together and I'll add that in the uh, cards above or in the link below. But this creates a lovely formula which I really like using. Um, again hopefully you can kind of see the kind of creaminess um, that this gel medium mixes. Now this has been kept in the jar for about two or three years so it, will, it won't go hard, um, it will last once you've actually mixed the formula. Again I'll put the, uh, the description below of the uh, products that I've used to make this gel medium. So what I'm actually going to do is paste this gel in the area that I want to work. Again this is important that of course your sky is nice and dry but I want this lovely creamy gel mixture to be in this area so that I can put my clouds on and keep everything nice and soft. So I've just mixed a, a sort of white with a little bit of orange there to get uh, started with the clouds and I'm going to use this uh, little scrubbing technique to begin form forming the cloud shapes. So now I'm actually using the brush to get a very soft bottom. I want the, the bottom of the cloud to kind of melt into the sky. Of course if you were using oils you would be able to do this without worrying about it. But it is so much more harder when you're using acrylics. But once I've got that gel medium on there it's really allowing me to build up these layers. So my advice is to work in these layers and build each thing on top of the next. And of course once you're happy with that layer you can then dry that off before you start working on a second layer. It really does simplify the painting process if you break your painting down into these stages and don't try to do too much all at once. So for tip number four I'm going to advise you where you possibly can to add your background first and then put your main focal point, your centre of interest on the top. So I've given you some great tips now on how to add a background and my advice would always be to add your background first. Um, and what I mean by that, I'm doing a very light sketch here um, of a vase, uh, again forgive the drawing as it really isn't the point of uh, today's video. But what I find a lot of students do is they try to paint around the main subject. So they go ahead and they do the tracing onto the canvas and then they'll try and paint around items. Now where you possibly can it is much better if you work your background out first and then transfer your tracing out on top. And the reason for this is that you avoid those hard edges. Because acrylics are so difficult to blend sometimes you can end up with an outline around your main subject. So if you can plan ahead and get your background in first and then place your subject out on top, you will find it a lot easier. So where you can avoid painting around a subject. So we're going to redo this vase but we're going to try and plan a nice mottled background for this vase of flowers to sit on top. I'm using some alizarin crimson and some burnt umber. And again I've put the paint on quite thickly so that I'm able to blend. So really I'm just throwing in a, a, a mottled background here using a mop to um, sort of get this lovely soft mottled effect. This isn't actually about the background itself, it's more about planning the background and then letting that dry and uh, putting your main subject and your main focal point on the top. So once your background's dry, you're then able to transfer your main focal point on the top. Um, for this demonstration, I'm just going to do a little vase on here. But of course, if you wanted to, you could trace um, straight onto that completed background. If you are tracing, I'd highly recommend you rub the back of your tracing with charcoal and transfer that way. Um, it's very, very easy to wipe charcoal off if you do make a mistake. And once you've transferred your main subject onto your canvas, you can begin blocking in. And for tip number five, I'm going to share a couple of ways on how you can use that gel medium. 
So now we're back to the subject of that gel medium and I want to give you a, a couple of different ways on how you can use that. Of course I've already demonstrated with the clouds that you can use the gel medium that way. And now I'm actually going to begin on this little vase that we've created just to give you an idea that once that background's on there you can start to just block in your main subject. And by blocking in I mean very much colouring book style. I'm going to go with a green vase here, I'm just using sap green and literally just colouring that in in one single colour in that sap green. What we will do is work in layers and start to add our highlights um, and our shadows using that gel medium. Once I've blocked that in I'll dry that with the hair dryer. So once again I'm going to cover the area of the vase with that gel medium and then we're going to start to add our highlights into that, um, into that green. I'm using cadmium yellow here. And that gel medium is allowing everything to just stay nice and soft. I will remind you at this point, this isn't my finest piece of artwork, uh, but it really isn't about the, uh, the actual image. It's really just showing you how you can use the different mediums and also build up these different layers. So while that gel is still wet, I'm still able to blend and build up those highlights. I'm always using a mop then to kind of soften. Once you've built up these colours, I'll dry that off with the hair dryer and then yet again add another layer. So these tips are all um, interwoven. I'll cover that area once again with that gel medium and build up the layers on that vase. Another way in which you can use this gel medium is to add it directly to the paint and this works really well for flowers. So you can see I've got a little bit of that gel medium on a paper plate and some purple and white and I'm just going to drag that colour right into that gel medium. I'm just going to create a few little daisies and here I'm adding some stems and some leaves. So you can see how easily that paint just flows right off the brush because it's got that little bit of gel medium mixed into the paint. So anybody who was really interested in the wet on wet oil painting technique but wanted to do it in acrylics, then this is the way that you would do that. So I'm using the brush on the chiselled edge and creating some of these leaves. And I will remind you this is not my finest piece of art, it really is just about that technique. again I'll remind you not to try to do too much if you do want to add another layer to your flowers then I would always let that dry and then come back and start to add some more details so once again now I'm going with some white now I've added that gel medium to the white and I'm able to create some of these lovely little daisies working wet into wet the layer underneath the purple of the daisies has actually been dried so I'm able to work straight on top. I'm adding a few centres here just to kind of make this painting a little more finished and of course drying that off between these layers. Again, I've added a little bit more white and put in another layer on and I'm going to just add a little shadow at the bottom of this, uh, this painting just to kind of finish everything off for you and you can see how to use that gel medium. I really do hope you've enjoyed these hints and tips and it's given you some ideas on how you can use these methods in your own painting projects. I hope this information has given you a real insight on how you can use my tutorials with different mediums to really mix and match the learning experience. So I really do hope you have some fun and play around and be willing to experiment. Happy painting.